Downwind sails are scary. They're big and powerful. They're rigged differently. They can be hard to deploy and even harder to furl. You don't want to get caught with one up in a storm. Sure, they're beautiful and fast, but do they have a place in a cruising boat sail plan? So far, the answer for Scout has been no. We've never flown one. But with us about to turn the corner and do many, many miles of downwind sailing, we're hoping to take advantage of one or another downwind sail. Join us on some sea trials as we dive into the world of downwind sails. Sale? Yeah, this will be first time. First time it's flown. Brand, brand new. Oh, wow. Do you have a sail like this on your boat? No. I'm curious to see. I, I don't have much experience with these sails at all, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think neither do we. That's kind of why we're. <laughs> That's, that's the whole idea. Nate's our, Nate's our guinea pig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just take your time and try not to break anything. Having the boys over for a little day sale. But first, we need coffee. We're going to try our new Grenadian roasted house blend. Smooth and aromatic. This, this goes on the Got head. It. It. Fundamentally, head sails have three connection points, the head, the foot, and the clue. They're really just triangles, though they may not have straight edges like a triangle, and the connections might go through complicated rigging. The head is up the mast, not necessarily up. at the top, but somewhere up high. The clue is the edge of the sail that goes laterally and is attached to a line called the sheet. The clue is generally what gets moved around the most for adjusting for shape of sail. The foot is down from the head. It may or may not be attached directly to the boat. For this code D, the foot is attached to a continuous furler. Going. Probably good. The reason why we want to put it for you before you leave is because both sit in front of back. And they never do. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm not going to need the winch. I just can pull it by hand, right? So what will happen is you're going to pull it by hand, right? And you're going to start, it's going to start coming out. And you just keep pulling it as much as you can. And at some point, the wind is just going to blow it all the way out. And then you'll have to crank it in to get the right shape. I got a camera up there. Woo! Yes, I love that they did that. I was worried it was going to be all one color.
That's about as tight as you'll ever make it. The reason we purchased this code D sale is because of the ease of getting it up and down. Specifically, being able to reliably furl it in any conditions. Namely, when we're in 20 knots of wind and there's a squall bearing down on us. And then easily getting it back out when conditions become more benign. Some sailors say a sock is more reliable. Our hope is that a continuous furler makes things even easier. Time will tell. It was a lot of cranking to get it down though I probably could have done more by hand once we turned into the wind a bit. So it's running up like that. That's yeah. cool. Who needs a bow sprit? <laughs> Alright, can you grab it? I got it. Not quite. Alright, there you go. Now it's yours. from the performance from that 15 minutes or whatever no, it was? No, not, I mean, well, so we had it almost dead down mm -hmm. and we had it to just about 90. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was happy with the range. Good. Uh, you know, it would have been cool if we were going a knot faster, but yeah. I, I don't know exactly what the current's doing, etc. So, no, yeah. it's hard to get, uh, it's hard to get picky about that right now. Yep. Was a reasonable knot, yay! <laughs> and this, you're getting out our A sim. A sim. A sim in a sock. A sim in a sock. Uh, Ten years old, but very lightly used. Had it out on the sail mm. loft in Ponce. Ponce yeah. yeah. You'll remember. What does it look like? Obviously, we've got the sheet already set up. We'll do this, use the same block, same thing on the sheet. And then we just have to, and then, and then there's the, the head. I, think I just, I, my question is what's going on here? I, I would think the most simple way to set it up is that you do one tack line to that corner, and then you have the sheet just out, just like we did the code zero. Okay. You need, you need okay. locks out on these very poor bows then, right? For the line to go into. Is that not far enough forward? Uh, no, because I think it's gonna, the rope's going to be yeah. on the pulpit. Clear this thing out. Ah. It 
tangled in there. Gave birth. Uh, so it's at this, the clue was stuck in that. Uh, there we go. Oh, she's named. <laughs> Let this go. Yeah, you can get it up there, Mike. Wow. I'd say it's not our first rodeo, but it's my first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This is my worst fear and potentially reason alone why we wouldn't fly this sail. Me hanging on the sock line and nothing happening. The solution is to take the wind out of the sail. Yeah, but even so, me on the trampoline while Megan is at the helm with weather bearing down on us is a situation we want to avoid. down babe. Huh? You bring it down. There yeah, she goes. Punch it up. Hold on. Let me see if I can. Hold on Nate. on the day. First, huge success in getting all three sails up and then down again. By design, we did the sea trial in very light wind and didn't have them up for super long, so it was tough to tell much about speed. The real test would be what happens when things don't go well. It's hard to envision flying the spinnaker very often. Both the Code D and ASIM will go pretty much dead downwind and have more static rigging, one sheet versus two. 
As for the other two, it will really come down to usability. Stay tuned to what gets the most miles, but the Code D will get the first chance on our upcoming passage.